we got our chapter two, chapter three test coming up. So I'm going to be going over the practice tests. My goal here is just to go through uh, these problems pretty quickly uh, to serve as a reminder for how to do these. So in case you're stuck, hopefully this video will help. All right, um, I'll go ahead and put a timeline in the comments um, so you can skip ahead uh, to different problems if you need to. All right, starting with problem one here, we are graphing, we're finding slope and y-intercept. So I'm looking at this equation. I can see that negative three is my slope and that negative two is my y-intercept. That's a negative slope, so I'm gonna go ahead and sketch my slope triangle. Negative three, if I write it as a fraction, that's negative three over one. Negative slope's gonna go downhill like that. And my slope triangle, I'm gonna be going down three and over one. So let's go ahead and draw the line. Uh, y-intercept is at negative 2, so I'll find negative 2 on my y-axis and draw my first point there. And then from that point, I'm going to use my slope, which is down 3 over 1. So down 1, 2, 3 over 1 gets me into a point there. I can keep counting down 3 and over 1 to get to the edge of the graph, and then we'll go the opposite direction to fill out the rest of my graph in the other direction. Grabbing a ruler here, just connect up those points, and don't forget to put arrowheads to indicate that this graph would continue on forever in both directions. All right, uh, the second one here, we've got a slope of positive one half this time. So this is gonna be going uphill from left to right. I'm gonna be going up one and over two. And my y-intercept is at three this time. So I'll go ahead and find my y-intercept. We're at positive three on the y-axis. And then from that point, I need to do my slope, which is up one over two. If I keep going to the edge of my graph and then back it up and go the opposite direction. And let's go ahead and draw our line here. Don't forget your arrowheads. All right, I always like to do a quick check and just make sure I didn't do my slope wrong because that's my most common mistake. Um, looking at this graph, the equation says it has a negative slope. Do I see a negative slope? Yes, as I walk from left to right, I'd be walking downhill along this line. This equation has a positive slope. When I look at this graph, am I seeing a positive slope? Yes, as I walk from left to right, I'd be going uphill. All right, we are moving on to number two. Here we're going to be doing the opposite. So we have an or a graph this time. We're going to find slope, y-intercept, and write an equation. So when I'm looking at this graph, the first thing I notice is the y-intercept is at 2. That's where it's crossing the y-axis. And then for the slope, I'm going to need a couple points. We'll go ahead and use that y-intercept, and I think I'll use this point here. So there's my slope triangle, rise over run is up three over two. And the big question is, is this a positive or negative slope? From left to right, we'd be going downhill, so it is a negative slope. So my slope is negative, and then rise over run would be three over two. Once I have my slope and my y-intercept, it's just a matter of putting those into y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form. So y equals slope comes first. Don't forget your x and the y-intercept is two. All right, next one here. Our y-intercept is at positive three this time. My slope is going uphill this time, and I need a couple points. Let's use this one here. And make a slope triangle. So up two and over one, we said our slope was going uphill, so it's positive. So my slope is two over one, or just two. Then my equation would be y equals slope comes first, and then x, and then plus y-intercept. All right, number three. Uh, we have a table this time. We're going to find the slope y-intercept and write the equation. So um, I noticed the y-intercept first. The y-intercept is the y value whenever x is equal to 0. So my y-intercept is 7. 
<coughs> and to find my slope, I need to remember that slope is change in y over change in x. So I just need to pick a couple values on this table. I'm actually going to go with the last two because everything's positive. But I could pick any two rows on the table that I want to. And I just got to figure out how is my x value changing and how is my y value changing. So let's start with x. So we're going from 0 to 2. I would say my x is adding 2. 0 plus 2 would get me to 2. So my change in x is 2. That's going to go on the bottom of my slope. And then my change in y, let's see, this time I'm going from 7 to 17. That's also adding. That's going up by 10. 7 plus 10 would get me to 17. So my change in y is 10. So change in y over change in x, that's 10 over 2. That simplifies to just 5. So then my equation is y equals 5x plus 7. Number four, we are only finding slope in this one. Uh, a couple different ways to do this. I kind of like this stacking method, so I'm going to stack my two points on top of each other. And I'll label x and y so I don't forget. x always comes first and then y. And my goal for doing this is we're going to do just like we did a second ago. We're going to find change in y over change in x. So. Let's do our change in y first this time. So I'm going from 24 to negative 9. 24 to negative 9. I'm definitely going to be subtracting. How much do I need to subtract from 24 to get to negative 9? I need to go down 24 to get to 0, and then another 9 to get to negative 9. So 24, 9 is 33. Minus 33 would be my change in y. If you're uncomfortable doing that mentally, you can always do the second value minus the first. You always want to do the second value minus the first. So if I wasn't comfortable doing that in my head, I could have gone to my calculator and gone negative 9 minus 24. And that would have gotten me that negative 33 as well. Uh, let's find our change in x. Let's just use the calculator for this one. Second value minus the first. So 16 minus negative 6. 16 minus negative 6. Second value minus the first. That gets me to 22. It's positive 22. So I'm going to change in x is 22. So here's my slope. We want to simplify that. Um, both of these numbers divide by 11. So that would get us 3 on the top, 2 on the bottom. What about our sine? Negative divided by a positive altogether, that's a negative fraction. So my final slope is negative 3 over 2. Going on to number 5. All right, we're writing an equation in number 5. And they gave us some specific information. The slope wants to be 6, so I'm going to label that m. And then it passes through the point negative 10, 40. Now, this is not a y-intercept because I don't have a 0 for my x value. So I've got an x and a y, but it's not my y-intercept. So I don't know what b is, and I need that to write the equation. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to go ahead and write out my format. It's y equals m x plus b. And I don't have b, but I do have values for m and for x and for y. So I'm going to put those here into the equation. So y comes first. y was 40. And then m. m was negative 6. And it's times x. So I'm going to put a parenthesis so I don't forget to multiply. Um, x is negative 10. Plus, and I don't know what b is, so I'm going to leave that as a b. And now what I have is a nice equation that I can use to solve for b. So let's do that. So we'll leave this 40 alone. We can simplify this. Negative 6 times negative 10 is positive 60. And I'm looking to get b by itself. So let's get rid of this 60 here. I'm going to go minus 60 on both sides. Cancel. B is left by itself. 
40 minus 60 is negative 20. So I, now I know what B is, and I already knew what M was from the beginning of the problem, so I can write my final answer. Y equals M was negative 6, X, and then B was negative 20. So Y equals negative 6, X minus 20. All right, second part of number five, we're looking for an equation of a line that passes through these two points. So in this case, I don't know M, I don't know my slope, and I don't know B. I'm missing both things I need to write my equation. So let's find slope first. So I'm gonna stack my points like we did a moment ago. And let's label them x and y. I know that the slope is the change in y over the change in x. So let's figure out what our change in y and change in x are. Change in y, if you're using a calculator, do the second value minus the first value. Um, that's going to get us 120. And then change in x, same thing. Do second one minus the first. That's going to get us 15. So change in y was 120. Change in x is 15. And that divides into, I want to say 8, but I'm going to double check. It is 8. All right, so now I know my slope. That's good. We just need a y-intercept. We need b. So we're going to do like we did in the last problem. I'm going to write out my formats. And I'm going to put some values in for x and y and m. So I know that m is 8. And then I need an x and a y value to put here and here. So I'm going to go back to my problem. And I'm going to pick one of these two points. It doesn't matter which one I pick. This one has smaller numbers, but they're both negative. This one has bigger numbers, but they're both positive. I think I'm going to go with the positive ones. It really doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer either way. So do whatever seems like it's more straightforward to you. All right, so 111 is my y value for that point. 10 is my x value. And I still don't know what b is, but now I have an equation that I can use to solve for b. So let's do that. 8 times 10 is 80. We need to get rid of that 80 to get b by itself. So we'll do minus 80 on both sides. B is 111 minus 80, that is 31. So now we have M, we have B, final equation, Y equals 8X plus 31. All right, number six is a situation problem about Gia. Gia is trying to buy a drum set. She has $245 now. She's saving $24 every week. That $245 would be her starting value. And 24 is how much her amount of money is changing. So we can write an equation. It's going to be in that y equals mx plus b format. Remember, m is the slope, but can also stand for the change. And B is the y-intercept, but it can also be the starting value. So my equation is going to be y equals change, was 24, x plus, and then my starting value was 245. So there's my equation. And I think it's smart to label our variables just so we know what's going on down here. They told us up here that x is the number of weeks and y is the amount of money saved. So let's see if we can use that equation to answer the questions down below. It says, how much money will Gia have saved after 10 weeks? So they're giving us this 10 weeks, and weeks is the x value. So they're telling us that x is 10. And they want to know how much money, and money is the y value. So we're trying to solve for y to answer this question. So let's rewrite our equation. 
And our equation is going to have a y in it, but we're not going to put x in the equation. We're going to put the number 10 in place of the x here. So here's my equation. y equals 24x plus 245. Same equation that we wrote up here. But I left the x out. I'm going to put the value 10 in here. And now we can solve for y. And to do that, I just need to well turn this whole thing into a number. My calculator can do that all at once. I'm just going to let the calculator do the work. 24 times 10 plus 245 is 485. So how much money will Gia have saved after 10 weeks? Gia's going to have $485 after 10 weeks. Now, does that seem like a reasonable answer? Let's go back to the original problem statement. They told us she started out with 245 and she's saving $24 every week. So after 10 weeks, she would have a, more than this. Um, yeah, that seems reasonable. 485? Sure. I'll believe it. All right, let's answer our second question here. Um, the drum set that Gia wants to buy costs $869. Um, that's money. So that must be a y value. They're telling us that y is equal to 869. And then it says, how long will it take her? So we're talking about time here, how long. Um, and that would be weeks. So they're asking us what is x. So we're going to be solving for x this time around. So we're still using the same equation that we wrote. But this time, we've got a value to put in for y. We're going to leave the x in the equation. So my equation is y equals, except I know what y is, it's 869, and then 24x plus 245. So same equation from up here. I just put 869 in place of my y. And then we can solve this. It's got some bigger numbers, but that's all right. I've got a calculator handy. So um, let's get rid of the 245 first. So 869 minus 245 is 624. Those are gone, so there's just a 24x here. And then we can get that x by itself by dividing by 24 both sides. 624 divided by 24 is... 26. So the question was, how long will it take her? We came up with 26, and we said x was in weeks, so 26 weeks. And again, does that seem reasonable? 26 weeks. Uh, Gia started off with $245. She's got a, quite a bit she needs to save up to get up to 869, so it's going to take her some time. 26 weeks, that seems like a reasonable answer. Yeah. All right, that's the end of the chapter one portion. Moving on to chapter three, or sorry, that was the end of chapter two. Let's move on to chapter three. We're using our exponent rules here. I'll be going through these pretty quickly, but make sure you reference your notes if you need to. Uh, multiplying a bunch of x's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven x's multiplied together, that would be x to the seventh. All right, uh, here I've got a 15. I'm looking for any other numbers. Yeah, there's a negative 3 that's being multiplied. Let's take care of those first. 15 times negative 3 is negative 45. And then we also have a bunch of a's being multiplied. One, two, three, four, five a's being multiplied together. And there's some b's. One, two, three b's. So there's my simplified version. All right, this is power to a power situation. In this situation, we multiply the exponents. So 4 times 3 gives us 12. This is a product rule. We're multiplying two of the same base together. In this case, we add the exponents. 
6 plus 3 is 9. A couple things going on in this one. I'm going to take care of the coefficients for 6 over 2 can be simplified. So I'm leaving that t to the negative 3 alone for right now and focusing on the 6 over 2. 6 over 2 is the same as 3 over 1. We can divide them both by 3, so this would be 3 over 1. So that's simplified. Then we have to remember what happens with a negative exponent. That's just going to move to the opposite side of the fraction bar. So the 3 stays up here. t to the negative 3 becomes t to the positive 3, but on the other side. We still got a 1 down there, but they really don't need it. Dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. So final answer is 3. I don't know why I wrote a 2. 3t to the third power. That is a really terrible 3, but it's doing its best. Anything to the 0th power is equal to 1, so that one's pretty quick. All right, again, let's take care of our coefficients first here. Negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. And i got a bunch of x's to deal with. Um, this is x to the first. Um, when I'm multiplying the same base, I add the exponents. So 6 plus 1 plus 5 is 12. Okay, we got power to a power here. i got a couple things without exponents. I'm going to go ahead and put exponents of 1 on them. Uh, the rule here is that we multiply the exponents times the exponent on the outside. So we're still going to have a 3 and an a and a b. Exponents are going to change, though. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And 4 times 1 is 4. And we can do one more step here because we know what 3 to the 4th is. That's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Um, and if you're not sure, use your calculator. It comes out to 81. All right, this next one has a negative exponent again. That's going to want to move to the opposite side of the fraction. So it's going to be moving downstairs into the denominator. Now, the negative 4 does not have an exponent, does not have a negative exponent. It has an exponent of 1 on it. So it's going to stay right where it is. Negative 4 stays up here. It's only negative exponents that cause things to move, not negative coefficients. All right, so negative exponents going to move that h downstairs. It's going to become h to the fifth. So negative 4 over h to the fifth. All right, we've got some bigger numbers here, but we'll follow the same process that we did over here. Let's start with the coefficients. Negative 6 times 9 is negative 63. We'll do our x's next. There's 12 x's here and 11 x's here. Adding the exponents together is going to get us x to the 23rd, and our y's, there's one y here and four y's here, 4 plus 1 is 5, so y to the 5th. A couple more to go. All right, this is d to the 1st up here. All right, I got 18 and... 16, those can simplify. What are they both? They both divide by 2 because they're both even. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So that takes care of the 18 and the 16. Now I've got some C's. i got 7 up top, 3 on the bottom. If we started canceling, these 3 are going to go away. We'd have 4 left over on the top. And D's, I've got 1 on the top. 10 on the bottom. If I started canceling, this 1 would go away. There would be 9 left over on the bottom. All right, last one in this section. Uh, 15 and 20, that simplifies. Those are both divisible by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So simplify that to 3 fourths. And I see some negative exponents that are going to be moving. So this V on the top is going to move down. The W on the bottom is going to move up. But everything else stays put. So I'm going to leave the W squared that I already had on the top. And then I've got another W to the negative 2 coming up, but it's going to turn into a positive 2 when it gets up there. And then on the bottom, we started with a V to the third on the bottom. That didn't go anywhere because it has a positive exponent. But then we got another five v's that move down from the top because of that negative exponent up top. So 
Um, and then, yeah, we should be able to combine some stuff together here. W squared times W squared is W to the fourth. And V to the third times V to the fifth is V to the eighth. All right, problem eight. Uh, it's asking us to multiply out here, simplify as much as possible. So I'm going to use distribution for this first one. 8 times 4x is 32x. And then 8 times negative 5 is negative 40. For the second one, since I have two terms and two terms, I'm going to use my box. We have x and 11, and then the other factor is x and 6. So the factors go on the outside, and then we need to multiply everything out. So x times x is x squared, x times 6 is 6x, 11 times x is 11x, 11 times 6 is 66. And that's going to be my answer, except I want to combine anything that I can. And these two terms do combine. They're both x terms, so we'll stick those together. So let's write our, our final answer. It's got x squared, and then 11x's and 6x's all together. That's 17x's, and then we've got a 66. Next one, we're distributing again. So let's do this a piece at a time. Negative 6 times 3 would be negative 18. And then I've got x squared times x to the 4th. That's x to the 6th. For my second term, I've got negative 6 times negative 7. That's positive 42. And then I've got x to the 2nd times x to the 1st. That's going to give me x to the 3rd. All right, last one's got uh, two terms, two terms. I think we'll go with the box again here. We got 4x and 1, and then 5x and negative 3. So multiplying, 4 times 5 is 20, x times x is x squared. 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. 5x times 1 is 5x. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And we'll see if we can combine anything inside here. Yeah, we got a 5x and a negative 12x that can come together. So final answer, 20x squared. And then 5 minus 12 is going to give me negative 7x's. And then minus 3 at the end. <coughs> All right, last question. Solving some equations here. So before we start solving, we need to simplify. We want to take care of parentheses first. So let's distribute this 3. 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times 2 is 6. Next, we want to combine like terms, although I do not have any like terms I can combine here. And then the third thing we need to do when we simplify is um, make sure we only have x on one side. Right now I've got x's on both sides, so I do need to get rid of one or the other. I'm going to choose to get rid of this 11x. We'll go minus 11x. We're going to end up with 4x plus 6 equals negative 22. And now we can work on getting that x by itself. So I'm going to get rid of the plus 6 first. We'll do minus 6 on both sides gets me 4x equals negative 28. And this 4 is multiplying, so I can divide by 4 to make it go away, leaving me with x equals negative 7 for our final answer. Don't forget that you can check your answers on these, and if this is a test, that's a good idea to do. I'll show you how to do that right here. I'm going to rewrite this equation, but I'm going to leave all the x's out. So 3 parentheses, 5x plus 2 equals 11x minus 22. And in place of all those x's, I'm going to put a negative 7. 
Now what I need to do is I need to just get a single number on both sides of this equation. And I could simplify it by hand, it wouldn't take that long, but if I'm working on a test, I probably want to be doing this as quickly as possible. So I'll use my calculator. I'm just going to type in this side, three parentheses, five parentheses, negative seven parentheses. And those parentheses are important, so don't forget to put those in. So I get a negative 99 over here. Now if I type this in and I get the same number, negative 99 on the other side, that means that my answer is correct. So let's see if that happens. 11, negative 7, minus 2, negative 99. The fact that I have the same number on both sides means that my answer is correct. So I've checked that and it is correct. All right, next one's an absolute value equation. For these, we split it into two equations and solve. The first equation would be the same, except remove the absolute value. The second one is the same, except remove the absolute value and flip the sign on the opposite side. So x equals 14, x equals negative 14. Sometimes we'll have to do some extra work to solve, but this is already solved, so those are my two solutions. If I wanted to check this, I would need to check both solutions. So if I put 14 into my equation, it'd look like that. And that's true. That would be 14 equals 14, which checks. If I put negative 14 in, just putting it into my original equation in place of the x, absolute value of negative 14 is 14. So both sides have the same number. That checks also. So we've checked both solutions here. All right, another absolute value. Again, we'll split it up. First one, remove the absolute value. Second equation, remove the absolute value. Flip the sign on the other side. So that 11 becomes a negative 11. We need to solve both of these equations. We'll end up with two answers. So let's add nine on both sides here to get five X equals 20. And then we'll divide by five on both sides to get x equals 4. So one of our answers is 4. We think we'll check it again in a moment. Let's solve for our other answer. We're going to go plus 9 on both sides again. 5x equals negative 11 plus 9 is negative 2. And then divide by 5 on both sides again. And x equals negative 2 over 5. All right, there's my second answer. I think these are both correct answers, but let's just go ahead and check really quickly. So original equation, absolute value of 5x minus 9 equals 11. I'll go ahead and write that down twice because we have 2 to check. And I'm going to put my two answers in. I think one solution is 4, so let's work this out. 5 times 4 is 20, and 20 minus 9 is 11. And the absolute value is 11. So we get 11 equals 11. 11 equals 11. Same number on both sides. So that one checks. This time we're going to put negative 2 over 5 in here. All right, 5 times negative 2 over 5 is just negative 2. Negative 2 minus 9 is negative 11. And the absolute value of negative 11 is 11. So we get 11 equals 11 again, which means this one checks also. All right, last one. Uh, we're going to multiply these two binomials together. I'm going to use a box to do that. So let me get my box drawn here. We've got 2x minus 1 and 3x and positive 1. So multiplying and then we'll write that down below, but see if we can combine. We can combine these two together. So we've got a 9x squared, negative 3x plus 2x would be negative 1x, and then minus 1 equals. So we got rid of parentheses over there. Let's get rid of these parentheses as well. Let's multiply that 6x. 6x times x would be 6x squared. 6x times 2 is 12x. And don't forget to bring down your 10. All right, so we've gotten rid of parentheses. I don't see any like terms to combine. 
I think I made a mistake. <laughs> I did. Hey, I'm glad I caught that. You see my mistake? I did 2x times 3x, and I got 9x squared. I'm not sure where that 9 came from. My brain made a little mistake there. That should be 6x squared, which would fix this to be a 6x squared also. Let me make sure I didn't make any other mistakes in here. I did that pretty quickly. Good there. Good there. Okay. I think we're good. Thanks for your patience. Um, all right. We got x's all over the place here. I love that this is 6x squared and 6x squared. That's nice. Let's go ahead and just subtract 6x squared from both sides. And they'll both go away. Um, that's still going to leave us with x's in, on two sides of the equations. I don't want that. So I think I'm going to get rid of the 12x and the negative 1. I think I'll get rid of the negative 1x. I'm going to go plus 1x on both sides. That'll make that go away. And then we'll only have x's over here. Okay, so let's see what we got left. Negative 1 on that side. Over here I've got 13x, and we still have that plus 10 hanging out. All right, now we only have x's on one side, so we can go ahead and solve. Um, let's do minus 10 both sides. Those will cancel. Negative 1 minus 10 is negative 11. And then we'll also divide by 13 on both sides to get rid of that. And I get x equals, and that's not a super satisfying answer because, well, it's a fraction. That's fine, though. Negative over a positive is negative. That does not simplify at all, so we'll just leave it as that simplified fraction. All right. Now, I could go back and check that, and I'm going to. Um, but I'm just going to use my calculator to do that. So I'll show you how I'm doing this. Um, this will be a little bit more complicated because we've got some bigger expressions here. But I'm going to type this in, parentheses 2x, but in place of x, I'm going to put a parentheses with my negative 11 over 13. So there's my 2x. All right, 2x, it was minus 1 in the parentheses. And then the second parenthesis starts, and there's a 3x, so there's my 3, but in place of x, I'm going to put in parentheses negative 11 over 13. And that, all right, so there's my 3x, and then I need a plus 1, and end that parenthesis. So I'm going to hit enter, let my calculator do its thing, and I'm just going to jot down this number that it gave me for this side. It was about 4.142, there's some other decimals, but about that. All right, and then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do the same thing, type this into my calculator with my fraction in place of the x's, and then I'm hopeful that I'll get the exact same number that I had for that last one. So let me go ahead and do that. So here's six x, negative 11 over 13, and then parentheses. And then x, negative 11 over 13, plus 2, and parentheses, plus 10. Hit enter, and there's that exact same number that we had a second ago. So since we got the same number on both sides, I'm convinced that our solution is correct. Check. All right. Um, if you finish with your test early, remember those good test-taking strategies. Go back and look for anything that you left blank. Maybe you forgot how to do something. But after you've done some other problems, maybe it'll come back to you. So give it, give it a try. Always put an answer down for everything. Put some work down. Sometimes just starting the problem, you, get, you just do one step and it suddenly starts coming back to you. So try everything. And then go back and look for those common mistakes. Common mistakes for me would be things like anything involving a slope. Right? So I might go back and check these over and say, oh, this had a negative slope in the equation, and I'm seeing a negative slope here. Check. This had a positive slope in the equation. I'm seeing a positive slope here. Check. I see a negative slope in the graph. Does my answer have a negative slope in the equation? Yes. I see a positive slope here in the graph. Does my answer have a positive slope here? Check. Yes. Um, other common mistakes would be flipping your x and y values when you do your slope. Remember, it's always rise over run or y's over x's. 
So I could go back and double check that I'm doing y's over x's every time I'm doing these slope calculations. Um, when we get to our equations, common mistakes with the equations is anything involving a negative. So I might just work through my equations, look them over and make sure anytime I subtracted or did something with a negative that I didn't do anything incorrectly. Um, actually, I've taken the time to check all of my equations already, so I already know that they're correct. But if you have time on at the end of your test, you could use that time to go back and check those equations as well. Um, make sure all of your fractions are reduced. Don't leave something as like 2 over 4, reduce that to a half. Um, yeah, and then check the solutions to the equations. All right, folks, I hope you do a great job on our upcoming test. Thanks for your attention.